Good morning and welcome to the Gospel Loft. We are in chapter 16 of the book of Revelation. And we have made a good start last time and we are now getting to verse 13 and 14. We've read it once before, but we will start there again. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth onto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Three frogs are three ideologies, which will unite themselves in a measure to consolidate their power against the Christ of God and his followers, they will convince the political powers to put an end to biblical Christianity. The ideology of the dragon, who represents Satan as the serpent, wants to achieve that goal, which removes humanity from any relationship with a personal God. Now, the religious symbol of the dragon we find nevertheless in the East. We can incorporate into this satanic scheme all religions and philosophies that have the dragon as their symbol. The East has based their religious doctrines on the thought of reincarnation, which stands in total opposition to resurrection. They have also made God into an impersonal essence, but being represented by over 200,000 minor gods was one of the top creatures being the god of destruction. We know who the destroyer is, and we know who is the creator. The next large world religion is the Roman Catholic Church, with its 1.2, maybe 1.5 billion members. And it is represented as the beast of revelation. The third world religion, of course, is Islam, its ideology is to terrorize the world into submission. <clears throat> All three are frogs from the pit. And we will see how the leaders of the world are bowing down to them. In Europe, we have a unification of the beast, and so in South America and parts of the USA. Together with them marches a similar theology, namely the Greek and Russian Orthodox churches. We can place them under the same hat in many regards. The false prophet Muhammad exercises his influence over all Arab states, over Asia. In Southeast Asia, we have Pakistan and Indonesia as the biggest contributors. These governments are almost 100% Islamic. In the Far East, we have predominantly Buddhism and Hinduism as the main dragon religions or philosophies. Yet, it is China that is the most prominent an ancient dragon worshipper. Although the masses have gone through a godless period of communism, the dragon still rules their hearts. For the devil, it makes little difference to which pagan religion humanity has attached itself. An alternative thought would place the dragon as the one issuing the three frogs, which could be seen as the first um, as, as, as firstly the synagogue of Satan, secondly the beast, and third the false, the false prophet. The thought in our verses uh, trail off to the end of time when the dragon nations gather themselves for the last war of this dispensation at the second coming of Christ. The great and terrible day of the Lord is on the prophetic agenda for over 3,000 years already. Then we come to verse 15, and behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. Jesus will appear unexpected. Nobody knows the hour nor the day. What we do know is perhaps the season. Much has already come, gone by in history and prophecy concerning our dispensation. Almost everything is fulfilled and we should be ready at all times to meet the Lord at his coming. The garment that we need to keep clean is the righteousness of God, which is by the way of the blood of Christ. 
all the goods that we have accumulated over the years make us to appear naked and shameful. Every unforgiven sin is recalled and without Jesus, only a second death will satisfy God Almighty. Those who have accepted Christ as their Savior will experience the forgiveness of sins and will be given a garment of righteousness. Verse 16, And he gathered them together onto a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Here is the thought of the end proclaimed. The nations will gather themselves together to battle against Gog and Magog, and against, the, against, um, against God and against the Lamb of God. They will be destroyed from heaven in that hour. And then we come to the seventh vial. Verses 17 and 18, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, or into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. The judgment fell onto the earth, the sea, and finally into the air. The earth and the sea are geographically limited. Air, on the other hand, we find everywhere. All that has breath is affected in this plague. The thunder and lightning happens in the air and speaks of a great judgment. The voices are loud and shout in the midst of the storm. The three frogs mobilize their followers and when fanatism takes over, we will see turmoil and chaos as never before. This we see in the symbol of the great earthquake, which describes the greatest upheaval ever and follows close to the fall of Babylon economically. We can expand our thoughts even further and draw the spiritual world in the air under the heavens into the conflict because it is for them also an end of influence for a thousand years. In the final war, although inspired by demon forces, evil will suffer defeat on earth. Then we read verse 19, And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. The great city is Babylon, which will come into a threefold judgment in the next three chapters. Chapter 17 deals with the first third and will make an end to the religious might of Babylon. Chapter 18 deals with the economic destruction of the city. And the third part is dealt with in chapter 19 to destroy the political power. And then Jesus will appear as king of kings. Verse 20, and every island fled away. And the mountains were not found. Mountains represent nations. Islands could be whole continents. But first the cities will fall in every respect. Isaiah writes, woe well unto him that builds wall onto wall and field onto field until there is no more space. We will have no nations, no countries, as it is known to us, only a world in total chaos. The Lord will have to bring order into it again. Verse 21, And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. We can leave the symbol for a moment and think about the reality of what would happen if the Lord would bring a comet out of its orbit and, and, and bring its tail to the earth in a mighty hail of ice. We, we have experienced the shower of meteorites already in the early mornings of the hour. The air was filled with sulfur. It is in these moments that we are reminded of Psalm 91 and a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, only thine eye shall behold, see the reward of the wicked. What will happen in reality we just do not know. 
The symbol of hail is the destruction of man's handiwork. It destroys the fruit of our godless labor. This would be the end of chapter 16, and we will close it here. We have next time chapter 17. Until then, God bless you.